So yeah, I uh, decided to build my very own Mortal Kombat cabinet, wouldn't you know it. Um, how this really kind of came about was a little while back I made a WWF WrestleMania the arcade game cabinet. Um, in that video I had a user reach out to me and comment say, hey, I'm local to you. I've got a couple of project cabinets. Uh, are you interested in buying either one of them? And I said, uh, yeah, absolutely. I I'm a sucker for projects. I, I don't necessarily have any more room left, but I couldn't say no because, you know, I, I just... Uh, I like to tinker and rebuild and revitalize and you know bring these things back to their former glory. So I bought two from him. Um, this was one of them. He was kind enough to deliver it to me. It started off as a just basically bare bones. Uh, I think it had Turkey Hunter USA inside of it. So that was the game that was loaded in. It was at a Midway Universal cabinet. If you're not familiar with Universal Cabinet, it is literally as the name suggests. It was Midway's Universal Blank Slate. Uh, they'd send out to uh, game owners, operators, things like that, and that way they could put whatever game they want inside the actual Midway cabinet body. Um, has awesome artwork on the side, and I absolutely hated to get rid of it. But uh, the artwork on the side of it reminds me of any kind of like 80s and 90s food court in the mall. Just has that kind of glamour shots, laser <laughs> artwork on the side. I really wish I could have kept it, but I wanted to make this Mortal Kombat cabinet. Um, it has the exact same body shape as the original Mortal Kombat 1 cabinet, so that's why I wanted to make that plus i just always loved the um johnny cage daniel pazina you know it's just iconic it's you know this was one of those things that was the heyday of the arcades for me street fighter 2 mortal kombat ninja turtles all that type of thing early 90s that was my prime time in the arcades uh, went ahead and got some brand new side artwork so i had to get rid of the midway universal arcade sand it down smooth it out and all that stuff put on the brand new Vinyl artwork on the side, it's a matte finish and I think it looks great, feels great. Um, I actually prefer it over the glossy finish, oddly enough. I thought I was gonna hate it, but I ended up liking it. It showed up super crumpled and bent and smashed in the mail and I was like, oh man, I'm probably gonna have to cut my losses here and I don't think it's gonna work out, but heated up real nice while I was installing it. All the wrinkles, everything smoothed out, so it looks absolutely phenomenal now. Um, got new side artwork around the control panel new front graphic obviously because there was nothing on there everything was plain jane black um t-molding brand new red t-molding of course to go with the mortal kombat theme that's the way it looked uh got rid of that old trashy black t-molding that was on there and brand new controls top to bottom originally like i said this was a turkey hunter usa but somebody at some point had cut the control panel to uh, mortal kombat button configuration. Unfortunately, they didn't cut it to where it was actually in line with what the Mortal Kombat artwork would be. So I actually ended up having to make my own control panel, but I just used that as a template. Um, got a control panel overlay uh, from XL Arcades. They do a good job. Um, very good product source for Midway um, cabinet body parts, panels, pieces, you name it. They are kind of a specialty shop for Midway type stuff. Light up marquee, 27 inch LED one millisecond gaming monitor in there. Um, couldn't save the CRT. It was pretty dirty, pretty toasty. Uh, tinker with it for a little while, but it was beyond repair, so it got donated to somebody else in case they wanted to try to fight with it, but more hassle than it was worth, so I put in the gaming monitor that I always use on most of my cabinet builds. Like I said, one millisecond LED response time. You turn on uh, your scan line filter, it looks great. Amazing viewing angles, no issues with lag or input delay or anything like that because it's got that one millisecond response time. Got my speakers hooked up to audio amplifier that is hidden inside the coin door there so I can easily turn the volume up and down and get this baby rocking. So fortunately for me, a lot of the hard to find pieces for a lot of these midway cabinets were already still there. Um, so the control panel bracket that goes along the backside and covers the gap in between the monitor and the control, that was there. The retaining bracket that holds the glass in place, that was there. So that's great because those are things that are extremely hard to find nowadays. I did have to make my own monitor bezel for this. Obviously the original CRT shroud wouldn't fit and wouldn't look aesthetically pleasing with the LED display in there. 
significantly wider. Um, so I went ahead, went to Hobby Lobby, got some black poster board, cut it to size, uh, measured the bejesus out of it because you know I wanted this to look exactly as flush as possible. Got the original uh, monitor sticker decal that is on the um, shroud there for Mortal Kombat 1. Which tells you how to play the game, but all that honestly tells you how to do is put quarters in and play the game. I mean, it's like the worst instruction ever, but to tie it all together, I thought it was absolutely necessary. Would it be great if it was still running the original hardware? Absolutely, but I can build this for cheaper than I can buy just the jammer board itself for Mortal Kombat 1, 2, or 3 these days. So to me, it's just more practical to put these things, these projects together the way I'm doing. Control wise, I went with the same controls that I use in every single build. These are the IL Euro joysticks, HAP competition convex buttons with D44X Cherry Micro Switches. Um, it's got a six button layout. Obviously Mortal Kombat was original five button dice looking layout. I configured it for the six button layout just because it's you know, more versatile for more games. I've got an Android system running in here that'll play anything I possibly want as far as retro video games and arcade games, things like that. Um, but I did have the artwork customized by XL Arcade as well to go ahead and make it look unique to the six button configuration. That way it looks stock, OEM, um, all the font, the text and everything. I went ahead and manually configured all my games on here. So Mortal Kombat plays with those two middle buttons. It's two block buttons uh, for ultimate Mortal Kombat. The top button is blocked. The bottom button is gonna be my run button. So it works out great. I didn't have to have that extra one, you know, hanging down there for the run button. For whatever reason, I've always just kind of hated that random button down there at the bottom, but got all my Mortal Kombat games on here. Like I said, all my retro video games, arcade games, NES, Sega, Super Nintendo, Naomi, Dreamcast, you name it. Plays them all great, plays them exceptionally well. First go around with the control panel artwork, things didn't work out. A uh, company sent me the wrong one, so I actually ended up just chopping pieces of it up and putting it as a, a decorative type of thing on the backside of the cabinet. Cabinet itself, the body and everything was pretty good. Didn't have to really repair a whole lot of stuff. Just really needed to give it a good deep cleaning because it was absolutely filthy inside. Uh, all the cobwebs, the bugs, the grime, the grit, all that kind of stuff hidden inside the cabinet. Lots of uh, extensive cleaning put aside. It shined up really nice. Like I said, I had the Turkey Hunter USA stuff kind of gutted. Uh, ended up parting all that stuff out and making a little bit of money back. That way I could feed it back into the project. But when it's all said and done, I think I got about $600 total in this. Uh, so yeah, worked out great. I'm very excited to have uh, an awesome looking Mortal Kombat cabinet. Now I got to make the hard decision. Do I keep it? Do I sell it for, you know, making room for something else, a new project? Uh, those, are, those are the hard decisions we have to make as an adult. And I know not everyone's a big fan of the 16 by nine widescreen thing in arcade cabinets to each their own. You can easily toggle this into 4-3 aspect ratio and play with bezels. I just personally don't like the bezels and I don't really mind the stretch on certain games. Now others, it completely drives me crazy and I just configure it to a different aspect ratio. Plain and simple, easy to do that in the menu settings. Like I said, scan line filter, you turn it on and it looks absolutely gorgeous. But you know, I, I get it, not, not for everyone. Different strokes, different folks. Everything I sourced and used on this cabinet, I'll go ahead and put product links down in the video description box below. That way you know which vendors I got what from. But overall, that's it. That's in a nutshell. Happy with the build. Turned out phenomenal in my opinion. I just, you know, needed a Mortal Kombat cabinet in my life apparently. Anyways, that does it for this video. Guys, if you enjoyed the content, make sure you hit that like button. Share this video with your friends if you found the information helpful. And as always, thanks for watching guys. It really means a lot.